that one guy that can come from Newell's old boys, who can move to Boca Juniors, who can move to River Plate, so play for the three biggest clubs in South America, then move to Italy, mm. and in the Champions League, slap Man United, slap Arsenal, win the Copa America, and be so good that they didn't even call him what they supposed to call him. They called him one thing, Batty Goal. So I'm going for Gabriel Batistuta, the absolute Argentinian hitman. That's my guy, bro. That's my guy. Fiorentina and Roma hitman. And listen, bro, listen. How many goals? I had it written down here. And it is now gone. All I'm going to say is <laughs> there was a lot, a lot of goals in Syria R. And a, and a lot, a lot of goals for Argentina as well. So for me, when you're talking about South American strikers, out and out number nines, I, I think we're talking about a Hall of Fame player here. And this is why I didn't do all time because we could have easily gone for like the Messi's, the Ronaldo's, this type of thing. This is why we bring out people from the past who have made a big difference as well. So and I think, I, think, I think the fact is Gabby actually doesn't get spoken about he doesn't get flowers as often as he should. He doesn't, for what reason or another. And that's why I think, like, if you were in the streets or if you if you had your ears to the streets as a footballer, whether you saw him or whether you didn't see him, you know that Gabby Gol was a goal machine. You knew he was a monster. You, If you're listening to this right now, pause it, go on YouTube and type in Gabriel Batistuta, goal versus Man United. Watch that goal. Once you've seen that goal, watch Gabriel Batistuta goal versus Arsenal. He takes Lee Dixon down the line, stands him up, cuts in, and at the most ridiculous angle, hits it in the far top corner. Like we're talking about an absolute monster. And again, again, what I say is, if we if we're talking about streets, we'll never forget. We'll never forget the the Fiorentina hitman for sure. I, I liked him so much, but my brother liked him. My older brother liked him. Um, during lockdown, I got one of those like cliche, like little football jumpers. So I got him one of those with Batis Juta and a Fiorentina one. It looks so nice. Where it looks like it's got the Nintendo logo, yeah? Exactly, the Amazing. Nintendo with the design. I was like, you know what? That's a little gift for your birthday. Enjoy it. I know you like Batis Juta. And then you're just kind of there remembering Batis Juta. I know you mentioned earlier about the goals that you scored, but a couple of stats here for us. 269 games for Fiorentina, 167 goals. Uh, for Roma, 63 appearances, 30 goals. And if we remember correctly, and I'm sure you'll remember, Danielle, that was when Roma won the league, the last mm. time they won the league, in that period when you had Totti and Batistuta. 2001? 2001, well done. 2001, yeah. yeah. Nicely done. And obviously for Argentina as well, 78 appearances and 56 goals as well, which goes Fair. to show what we have. When you're, you know, at international level, I, I think people don't actually understand the goal ratio that you have is not the same as the one you have at club level. So I, if you're world class over like 20 years, yeah, it's like one every three, or if you're unbelievable, one every two goals, one every one goal every two games, or, or normally over a 20 year stretch, one goal every three games is sensational. At international level, it's it's more like one goal every five or six games. Mm. Or what like that that's just the way international football is. It's sporadic. You're not playing with each other as much. The systems are different, different players are coming in and out. You, sometimes you play against teams that are that are not there to play football. So it's a very stifled and staggered way of playing football. And then there's sometimes at tournaments as well, when you play. Um, sometimes it's not free-flowing football. Like Everyone's nervous because they don't want to go home early. So for him to have that record at international level, I think we need to put that into context to realise how crazy that is. He did it in the league. He did it for the national team as well. Unbelievable. Definitely. And as someone that, if like you just said as well, if you need to pause it, if you need to go watch uh, about some of these guys as well, you definitely need to because it's one of those things that, as a coach as well, when I'm talking about some of these players, like people forget who Didier Drogba is, for goodness sake, as well. It's kind of there. It's kind of there. Like these kids, they're not getting the best of education. So I tell their parents, I'm like, you know what? Have a look at some of these players. You'll be you'll be good to go sometimes soon enough to learn how some of these players actually work. Because when I compare it just out of, off the top of my tongue, oh, you remind me of like a young Nicholas and Elton. Like who? I'm like, oh my god. Nah, no. <laughs> oh, damn. It, it makes it, us feel old. Nothing makes you feel older than talking about players and then people not knowing who they are. 
Who? Who? Like, yeah, like, yeah. like it's like, what? Like, Nick, Nico Anelka, bro. Like, some people can't, can't believe that he played for, they're like, oh, yeah, Bolton legend. I'm like, yeah, mm. but. Arsenal, <laughs> Real Madrid. <Yeah. laughs> he, did, he did the business. He did the business. Oh, right. no. But I have to say, you've done very, very well with your picks today. So I'm really happy with, with your team. <laughs> Thank you.